Hey quilters, it's Mary Ann Fontana. I have decided to redo my binding video. Uh, I had a lot of people say the sound was off and that was one of my first ones and I was still learning. Um, and while I always knew how to do the binding, the video was the stuff that I was practicing. Anyway, I just finished quilting this, I call it the glorified flower patch and there is a video on it on how to make it. Uh, and this is it. Anyway, it's time to bind it, and I have my binding. I actually am using two and a quarter inch strips. Use two and a half inch strips if you're more comfortable. I just started using them, and I think it looks kind of cool. It's a narrower, a little bit narrower, but um, I do okay. So I'm going to use those, and the first thing I'm going to do is miter the pieces together. I'm going to sew them in at an angle, and then I'm going to go and press it in half. So I don't think I need to show you me mitering the seams or pressing it in half. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna go and attach the binding by machine the entire way, okay? So I have my binding. I did press it in half, just equally, right down the middle. And your seams, if you've mitered them, okay, should look like that. Now, I, what I did is after I uh, sewed it, well, it was still like this, I cut it off and then I pressed the seams open. And then I just pressed the entire binding. Now I'm going to start the binding on the wrong side of the quilt. So this is the front of my quilt. This is the back, which is predominantly white, except for the strip in the middle, butterflies, because I ran out of white. Butterflies are always good. I figured flowers attract butterflies, so that's my logic. And I like the black binding so it wouldn't uh, detract in I'm going to take the folded binding, the raw edges, and I'm going to place it on the edge of the quilt about somewhere in the middle. I don't like to start on either end. Okay, so I'm just going to put it like that, and I'm going to go ahead and go over to my sewing machine now. Here I am at the sewing machine, and I've already started. We have a, had a technical issue, and I lost a file. So basically what I did is I started in the middle of the one side, any side, and I left like about eh, three inches, and I started to sew with a quarter-inch seam using my walking foot. I really recommend a walking foot. If you don't have one, buy one. It's a game changer. It really makes it a lot easier. The pieces feed in evenly. Uh, anyway, enough said. So I've sewn this a little bit and I went to the end and I was just getting ready to turn the corner uh, when technical issues struck. So what I did is I sewed the quarter inch all the way to the end, stopping one quarter of an inch from the end. And I have a quarter inch marker on my foot plate. But if you don't, take a little ruler or eyeball it and make sure you know where the end is and stop. And when you get there, back up two or three inches and cut your thread. Now I'll do another corner so I can show you in real time. But so that's done. So now all I have to do is I'm gonna turn the quilt at a right angle to go to the next side. You know, make sure your fabric's not all bunched up and pulling on you. You want it to be able to be free uh, while you're under the, uh, while you're sewing. So now I'm going to just take it and I'm going to pull it straight up. You see that? Oh, let's get this out of the way. And it's at an angle here. See that angle? It's at the corner. It's right where that stitch is ending a quarter of an inch from the end. So I watch watch again. I'll do it. Let me see if I can do it without getting my hand in the way. I'm going to fold it, and it really, the way I do it is I fold this side up to make this straight and just make sure it's by the corner, okay? And then you hold your finger at the very end and you fold it down. And you fold it right against the raw edge of the fabric. So you have raw edge here and the raw edge there, this is folded. And underneath you've got that little fold that you made. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put it under my foot plate. 
and my presser foot and I am not going to start at the end. I'm going to start about a half an inch from the end and I'm gonna put my presser foot down. Let's go look. Okay, I'm not at the end. This is the end of my fabric. This is about where my needle is. I've lined it up to the end and I'm gonna take two or three stitches and then I'm gonna back up to a quarter of an inch of the line and then come forward again. Do not stitch to the end. Uh, and if you do, we'll just pick out the stitches later because you really don't want to have the stitches at the end. So I'm going to start. I'm going to go just to the quarter of an inch, one more, and I'm going to stop and I'm going to go forward. Now I'm going to sew the entire side, pulling my fabric and loosening everything as I go so there's no stress on the binding or on the side. So here we go. Now I have, as I mentioned, a two and a quarter inch strip I'm using. Uh, you probably will be using a two and a half, which is more common. And so I have to be a little extra careful, but you really wanna nail that quarter of an inch because it gives you extra room when you turn and when you pull the fabric to the front. Okay, so there's my miter seam. And I'm gonna go to the end and turn the corner with you. Okay, through the magic of video, we're at the end. And here's the end of my fabric. Let me move up, let's come out a little bit. Okay, so here's the end of my corner of my quilt. Um, and I'm gonna sew to a quarter of an inch to the end. All right, I'm right there and I'm gonna back up. And I'm gonna cut it. Now I can just pull the quilt away. Of course, if it cut properly, I could. So I will use my mechanical scissors. Always have a pair handy. Now I'm gonna turn the quilt 90 degrees to go to the next side. So here it is. Here's our binding. Oh, I got it fell on the floor, sorry. All right, so here's our binding. I guess I'll get that out later. And then we're gonna fold it up, remember, at an angle, up, so that the corners meet. Now that, I think I sewed that a little bit bigger than I needed to, because my corner point doesn't match as good as it should. So I'm gonna just pull this down a little. Okay, so I folded it this way with a little angle. And now I'm gonna hold my finger and fold it down. And set it right where that raw edge is. And this is against the raw edge. And that little triangle fold is tucked away in there. Now I'm gonna put it under my foot, <clears throat> excuse me, about a half an inch away from the edge. And I'm gonna to start to sew. And then I'm gonna back up to that quarter inch mark. And then I'm gonna go forward and sew the seam all the way to the next corner. Now I'm gonna go and do the other two corners on my own. And I'm gonna come back and we're gonna talk about how we cut it off and turn the binding. I'm tuning you back in on my last corner. I figured it wouldn't hurt to show it one more time. So all the way to a quarter of an inch and stop and back up and cut it off. Remember, you're just cutting the thread, nothing else. And I'm gonna turn, it's the last turn. I'm on the home stretch, on this side anyway. I'm gonna fold it up. Here, let's see if we can't do this so you can actually see it. All right, sorry about that, fold it up. Let's get some light, isn't that nice? 
fold it up, fold it down, hold it in place, <clears throat> pick up your foot pedal, put it about a half an inch away from the end. Start to sew, back up. Part of the reason I do that is the first couple stitches don't always take, and if you start where you want to, you usually don't end up with the stitches where you want. So I'd rather back into it when I know the stitches have caught. coming to the end. Okay, so I'm coming upon the end. I'm gonna back out a little so you get a little longer shot. Here's my end that I started and I left that tail. So I'm gonna make sure this is straight. Fix my foot pad, okay. And I'm going to sew as close as I can to that end of that seam without going over. So I'm going to actually hold my finger there. See, because I folded back the tail that was extra. So this is where the stitching started. So I'm folding that back. And that actually can, I can feel that. So when I go like this, so I'm gonna try and get as close as I can without going over and I'm gonna cut my thread. Okay, so now we're gonna actually sew the two strips together before we turn. So we're gonna have one continuous binding all the way around. And the easiest way to do that is you take the top piece and you turn it to a right angle. that I'm kind of ignoring this bottom piece at the moment and I'm gonna finger press it really good now this is the important part keep that seam exactly it is that fold and you're gonna fold the quilt along that line so let me let's see if I can even back up some more a little bit all right so I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna fold it just like that I'm gonna fold the quilt see the way I folded it and I'm going to take that fold and I'm going to extend it out all the way out and keeping my hand on this. And then I'm going to take that fold and I'm going to turn it so like I'm going to stitch along it. Turn it. I picked it up. This is the fold I just made. This is where my folded piece of fabric is. My tails are over here. Okay. And I'm going to... Now pull the bottom piece out. That's that long piece you had. Now, if it kind of flops every which way, you can cut some of it off. I'm gonna just see if I can put it here, okay. So the key here is they have to be at right angles. So this goes exactly this way. And when this one crosses, I'm gonna pick up the foot pedal, the foot plate, and look at them. And they're almost, see the right angle, right angle. So. The top one is going this way, the bottom one is going that way, and all I did was fold the quilt along that fold line. Okay, now I'm gonna get as close to that fold line as I can. Let's look really close. Can you see where I'm at? This is where the, uh, here, let's look. Let's get this out of the way for a minute. There's where the quilt is folded, you see that? That's where I, remember I folded this piece. This was the bottom piece. This was the bottom piece that I folded, and then I folded this to match it, okay? And by doing that, I've created a right angle to put my binding against. So I'm gonna put this back. Let me see, lift up my foot plate. Put this back over here. Now, they actually look pretty good. If they weren't, it meant that I didn't fold them well. You know, I didn't do the right angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to sew at the very corner where the quilt edges and that piece of 
binding um, hits the quilt, but I'm going to sew the binding, not the quilt. Put my foot plate down. And I'm going to take about five stitches. Then I'm going to back up. Being careful not to sew into the quilt. Okay, now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna feel where my quilt is because it's underneath, okay? Oops, sorry. It's kind of hard to do the camera, the foot pedal. I need another hand. And I'm gonna sew to that little crotchy piece, that corner where the two pieces of binding and the raw edge meet making sure my quilt's not dragging and I'm not catching it. When I get to it just to the end like that, I'm gonna back up to the middle and then I'm gonna cut my thread. Now I've sewn the two pieces together of the binding and if I've done it correctly, I have not sewn it to the quilt. Okay, so we're gonna back up a little and I'm gonna pick up my foot plate. Now you have to check at this point and see I'm pulling it away, it's not sewn in. So I'm good to go, I can clip my raw ends. Now when you cut it, just cut a quarter of an inch and cut straight up. And take these pieces and put them away. Now you can cut the piece that's the raw edge at the bottom. Do not cut the tail at the top that's facing the quilt. I just, it's easy for me to get this angle. Get these out of the way. Okay, so what I did is I just cut this raw edge here, but I didn't cut the tail up there. Okay, and now I'm going to open it. Let's back up. Unfold it. Okay, now look, it's perfectly sewn together at an angle. Now there is a little bit of a space where we, you know, sewed kind of close to each other. And I'm going to open this up. Just look, let's see if you can, I want you to really, see, we actually sewed it together and it's mitered. And what I'm going to do now is just sew, close that seam. I'm gonna start about an inch away. And I'm gonna actually backspace over that seam. And then I'll stop and cut it off. Now we're ready to turn the binding. I'm leaving the tail on. This one, I cut this one off. So, turn it around. Okay, I'm gonna turn the entire quilt around and I'm gonna pick you up on the other side. I've turned the quilt over, I haven't done anything else. This was the bad, wrong side. This is where we just sewed that piece. Can you see my little tail is there? Okay, and so I've, Turned it to this side. Now I did snip a little bit of the seam out of here because I don't forget I'm doing dealing with a two and a quarter inch um, strip. You're probably dealing with a two and a half, so you have a little bit more leeway than I do. Now I do push all my little raw ends into the seam. So I'm gonna fold it over. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start stitching a couple inches above where that little tail is, just because I wanna secure it. Okay, so I've started my sewing in the middle of the section. I have that tail, and what I'm gonna do is push that tail under, and it actually keeps you from having a little raw edge there, and I think it's just good. I like that. So, actually, I have a pair of a couple different tweezers and clips. These are actually surgical clamps um, I use, and I have a pair of large tweezers. I actually got them, I took a doll making class one time, and they said for stuffing, they used those surgical clamps so they could push the, uh, you know, polyfill all the way down. I see how nice that was? I went right over that piece. Now I'm just gonna go along, and so, if I have a lot of threads, I'm just gonna keep tucking them in. And 
unfolding as I go and holding, I'm actually holding the fabric here and God pulling it a little so it's not putting stress along here and it's not pulling anything. Now, one of the things I like to do, and I don't know if you've noticed that I have stitching all the way down the edge of the quilt. Uh, I do free motion my own quilts and I like to put at least one or two rows of stitches around the outer edge. It helps keep it from stretching. It actually helps the sides when I trim it off a lot to keep even. So, all right, we're coming near the end, which is the important stuff to see. All right, now I've stopped. Let's just back up just a little. Okay, so I've stopped Oh, five inches from the end. Now I've got a really bulky piece here and I'm going to trim it. So let's get really close and let's look at this piece. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the binding out of the way and I'm gonna clip that corner right in there, okay? See that? See the way I clip that? I just poof, but I held that right now. I'm also going to take the scissors and I'm going to hold it between the binding and the quilt. And I'm going to trim the corners off very carefully. I'm going to back up just a little because I feel like you're not getting enough light to see it. Um, let me get, I have so many lights here and you would think I'd get more light out of this, but maybe it's just my eyes and you can see fine. So I'm going to trim it. I like to trim maybe an inch, inch and a half off each side. And I do that because when I turn that corner, there's going to be an awful lot of bulk in that corner. And I am going to try and get a perfect point. You noticed I said, I'm going to try. All right, so I'm trimming this carefully, carefully. And you need pretty sharp scissors to do that. So see how much I cut off. But that really makes a difference. Those two little pieces that I cut off is going to really help me. So we shall continue. The surgery is a success. Okay, now I'm going to sew a little further down. And I'll stop there. Now I'm going to fold this end up. I'm going to pull it up. I can pull it up a little bit of ways because, you know, we're going to have to turn the corner. Okay, so let's see if we can get close enough so we can actually, you know what, I want to do something. I want to get a piece of paper. Oh, we got a little tissue here. Let's just say I want you to be able to see this. I'm going to first take the bottom piece, tuck all those little ends in, and I'm going to fold it up. And see this is sticking out? I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it over. Now, if it's not a perfect point, you can tuck a little extra piece in and look at it and see how you like it. And I sometimes will play with it. And I'll do another one. And I'm trying to keep it straight. Let's do one more. I'm not really turning it. I think my fingers are too... You can use tweezers also if you find it easier at this point. I'm just trying to be perfect here, so it, I'm playing with it for a little bit. Okay, all right, so I don't think that's too bad. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, I don't like it. Yeah, you know, you gotta play sometimes, can I tell you? And of course, being on film makes me wanna make it look better. All right, so I'm actually, now I'm happy with that. Now, can you see that? Let's see if we can get you really close. See that? I'm gonna just sew that in now, right to the corner. and stop and back up. Two or three stitches only, go forward the same amount. Needle down, and now you're going to turn. So let's pick up the foot plate, press our foot, and I'm gonna turn this, I get rid of my paper towel. Oh, I guess I sewed my paper towel in. <laughs> Never mind, get that off, it's not a big deal. Anyway, so, but now the good news is, I'm facing this way, I'm ready to sew, and I'm in position. And 
as soon as I get a little further on, I'm going to show you that corner. And then we'll just keep going. I got a couple threads here. Okay, so let me see. Oh, I need a little bit more. Okay, so let me see if I can bend this down. All right, so here's our corner that we did. Let's see if we can get some light on it. There's my napkin. See my paper towel? <laughs> I can just put the paper. The good news is it's paper to wash out. All right, see, who says we don't make mistakes? I do it all the time. Can you see that now? I think you can see it. There we go. It's not bad, right? Pretty cool corner. And it's as easy as that. All right, I'm going to go sew down a little. You don't need to watch me fold, sew the edge, uh, you know, the side on. Uh, but I am going to finish this, and I'll go to the next corner, and we'll do it again. Okay, coming up on the next corner. I've actually already trimmed it. I trimmed off the top, again, being careful that I didn't cut the corner. And then I took my scissors. The real thing you want to do is make sure you cut that batting out a little bit. I still have a little bit more here. Maybe I'll trim a little bit more out. Let's just see here. Because there's stitching in it. Sometimes the stitching is also bulky. All right, so I got that stitching, so I'm happy. I'm actually going to come down here a little. This looks pretty fat. And this is just a personal thing. I find it makes it easier for me, especially since I'm using the narrower binding. I need all the help I can get. All right, so I'm going to straighten out the bottom and see how we do this time. All right, it's straight in this little tail. Oh, I should I sew my paper towel in again? Okay, let's see if I can do it a second time. All right, so there it is. And I'm actually going to give this a little pinch here. Can you see that? Let's go back here. I'm going to try. I have my uh, swivel chair leg is in the way. Okay, so I folded it. See, it's just, this is not, I didn't do anything with it. It's just been sewn and the foot plates over here. And I folded this across and I'm going to just grab this little piece and give it a little tuck and fold it over. And there you go. I got the perfect corner this time. I wasn't practicing, I promise. I just, sometimes you nail it and sometimes you don't. If you ever saw the uh, Acucool challenge about the pets, I did the quilt, the dog quilt. I don't know if you saw it. And it won, thank you, if you voted for me. And one side of my quilt said, some days you're the dog. And on the other side, you flipped it over and it said, and some days you're the hydrant. So this was a dog moment. Look at that, poof, perfect. Oh, I just lost it, didn't I? There we go. And I sewed the paper towel in again. <laughs> oh, I thought I said it as a joke, but I did it again. That's okay. It's like interfacing. <laughs> All right, so let's pull it away again. There we go. Okay. Maybe why not? I'm not going to redo it. I can't unsew it, so, and I'm not going to rip it out and pretend I didn't make a mistake. Oh, foot plate down. And now I'm just going to go again and sew. Let's back it up a little. And I just fold as I go. Like that. And I actually get it as close as I can to the edge. Really close. And I tuck in those little threads as I go. Okay, side three coming up in a minute. Again, I've trimmed it out. Fold the bottom down first. Fold it over, hold it in place. Take the little corner, and I usually like to fold it up a little. I find it really makes a better corner if you can fold it up a little. I don't think I have too much bulk here. All right, we'll just see. Do the best we can. There we go. Okay, not too bad. I can live with it. Okay, and we'll turn. And I got one more corner to do. 
And then we just have to close it up and we are done. Done, done, done. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys round the last corner all by yourself. And we'll all be back to close up. Okay, just about at the end. Okay, just this little piece, and as nice as you like. It is done, perfect binding. And we didn't have to cut it at all. It came out. The corners, I think, look great. And if you're interested, this is the reverse side. Here you go. Let's get a close look. Not too shabby. I made a little piece of thread there. That's probably a tissue that I sewed into that corner. Look at that. And this is the front side. Easy peasy. Fast and quick, you know me, need for speed. It went together really quick and easy. Here's another, this is probably my worst corner. Let's look at my worst corner. There, it's a little bumpy, bumpy right there. So it's not bad. So that's how I do my perfect quilt binding. Okay, so this is the finished quilt, uh, bound and everything. I hope you enjoyed the easy binding tutorial. If you uh, are interested in making this quilt, there is another video. It's the Glorified Flower Pot Patch. Glorified Flower Patch video. So uh, it's also free. All my videos are always free. Uh, I do encourage you to go to my Etsy site and um, uh, perhaps maybe purchase a pattern to encourage me, but you're under no obligation. So I hope you enjoy learning from the videos and sharing your love of quilting with others. Have a great day.